The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome, everyone, to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got a very light push higher this morning. Market was a little worried, I guess, which way to go. And, of course, uh, we got some earnings coming out and... Uh, uh, well, certainly, I think we could probably state there isn't a lot of volume, at least at this time. We're doing about 6.7 billion shares, and this is back into a fairly high uh, volume uh, down thrust. But we're pretty much, uh, at least in the spies, back to the resistance levels. Uh, Walmart. Uh, came out with earnings uh, before the bell as long as, as as well as Home Depot. You had a gap up. There's some volume. You're I'm, you're almost well. 142 would be the the resistance level uh, that this thing would bounce to and still be in a bear position. Um, did they sandbag a little bit? Yes. Were the earnings as good as? Uh, the price would indicate probably not just as many of these too many short positions let's take a look at home depot uh it was weaker after the opens kind of the same thing uh lots of shorts uh, i think it was down a, a buck or two pre-market uh, opened up about flat and then uh i think people shorted it and they've been covering all day long a little bit better volume uh, we talked yesterday about Home Depot and Lowe's, and uh, the Lowe's around me uh, having a bunch of uh, uh, shoplifting, uh, just an overall loss. Is it low? Just straight low? Lowe's company? Um, and it was right back up to resistance. Is that the, is that the right one? Lowe's and Lowe's companies? I guess it's the same one. Uh, right up against resistance. So I, can you make a lot out of this? No, other than you probably don't want to get short stocks right now uh, that have high short interest. And, of course, uh, we talked a little bit about this. I can't remember about on the show uh, or on the uh, in the den. I remember I brought it up in the den at least uh, at the uh, open yesterday morning, and that was 40% uh, short interest in bed, bath, and below. But uh, that's why you aren't short 40% uh, of the float in a stock, no matter how horrible it is. Um, so the memes are back, which is telling you it's rather frothy. The Fed won't like this at all, but the question is whether they'll do anything about it. But uh, everybody kind of went back to the uh, – uh, wild Wild West again, as soon as I think, as I did, saw that they were more than willing to throw money into the equity market to support it, although they're saying quite the, the, the different thing. And, of course, we'll know Thursday night uh, after the bell if they've added more cash. But, it, you know, as far as the volume, it doesn't look like there's that much that they're pushing out here. Maybe they'll give a little bit of help. But uh, I suspect they will now be worried about stocks like Bed Bath & Below and others uh, with irrational exuberance. Uh, uh, about QT and why this is not uh, – okay, I just wanted to make sure you, when you were talking about QT, you were not talking about a – Stock. I wanted to check. There is none out there uh, in a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 well, because I don't think it's quantitative tightening. 
I think that last week when we saw them put almost $5 billion more into equities, that tells you that they that there isn't quantitative tightening. And my guess is that they did that to get over the weak numbers in China. The question is whether or not they're going to do that yet another week. And my, my thoughts are they just did it to make sure that there was no big implosion in the stock market um, from last week. This week, now that we've gotten through it and gone to some levels that they're probably thinking are a bit lofty, they're probably regretting the decision to throw $5 billion back uh, into the equity market. So, yeah, you, you could have a new Fed put out there on the market. I don't think that they're going to go that far. Uh, and, uh, you know, really the dollar, some of these other things, I think they can do a little bit, but I don't think they can do a whole lot. But my belief was or is that they did it just to get past the uh, weak China news. And now they're probably regretting it. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight, and we'll probably come back to some quantitative tightening. But I think a lot of people are thinking, "What do we got? What is it like the twenty seventh? The next time they come out for their meeting, uh, Fed meeting calendar." What is the date here? September 20 and 21st. I, I knew it was kind of late next month. So I think, you know, we're basically still 30 days away from it. I think a lot of people are going to try to ignore them doing anything. But my guess is that they give us at least a half or three quarters yet again. Okay. Uh, okay. We've got uh, just wanted to make sure that it was what we're talking about. Uh, quantitative tightening. I think it went away for a week. Everybody thinks that it's uh, game on. And things like Bed Bath and Below and others and start uh, scratching their heads. But it may take a while to get us back uh, to where they once belong. Okay. Uh, usual suspects. We'll go them real quick. Come on. I know. I know. Okay. Do we have that? Let's see. I guess that's not doing what I want. So let's do this. Huh. I am unsure. Oh, did it finally, finally quit, huh? Okay. We get back. We'll look at Apple. I'll try to get, uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Keep it. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. As we return. Uh, looking at Apple coming right back up to this gap that goes back to April 6th, came down on about 80, and let's call it 90 million shares. We're doing about 70 here. Um, energy's not as bad as one would think in Apple. I think they're highly optimistic. I don't, you know, unless someone, unless they've let it leak and not let anybody else know, and everybody else has been looking about a new phone that does something great. I'm not exactly sure why everybody's piling in this. Maybe they think that uh, their streaming service is going to bring them a bunch of cash. But I don't think that moves the needle either. With 50% uh, of all revenue uh, coming from the iPhone and 80% of all profits coming from the iPhone, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here i just don't find that many people saying they need a new iphone as of late most of everybody's just kind of happy where they are uh, okay yeah it's it, the the old saying someone brought it up they didn't the old saying is that you never get fired on wall street for buying ibm and i think that's kind of what apple is now uh, micron Eh, you know, you had a big bounce out here. You got no volume. This is just like the rest of the market. But this is kind of what you want to worry about. And that is any close now back below uh, a uh, trend line uh, after so many days above it, a couple of days below it, and a couple of days above it. Any move back below it generally is fairly quick and sharp. Um, generally, you don't want to make bets on this until it actually goes through. But generally, if you start seeing a big candle to develop as it breaks, breaks back through some kind of trend line out there, that's it. This one, there just isn't that much money in it, but it's probably indicative of some of the action in other SMH-like stocks. Uh, you got uh, one day in the SMHs. Now we're looking for the same thing. Anything that really breaks uh, this trend line around 242 takes you back down to July 14th and what was the 
yeah, let's call it 210, 211 ish, uh, is where support would be. Uh, another question from Joe today about the TLT. I just think we're working our way back down to uh, at least that previous low around, uh, what is it, uh, the low of the day, 112.05 from the 8th of July. And then we need to go back and retest at least the 108.12s. So you got kind of a doji here after the gap down. You're kind of going sideways a little bit. I think we're just going to slowly drift back down to 112 at the moment, maybe 112 and a half, somewhere in that area, maybe 113. You got kind of close to 114.24. You need one more test of that low. If you exceed it with volume, which it didn't have a lot, so it's probably going to be fairly easy to do, then you get back down into the 111 area and then 108.12, which did have a lot of energy back at that you know, 111 to 109 area. So I think you want to see that retested, at least the way that this has acted. Uh, question about the dollar. Do I see anything changing there? And let me see. That is, okay. Two, two, two. Okay. Um, got to 106. Uh, 80 today you're down to 10629 it just really looks like a lot of people are very interested in keeping it in this area uh, but uh, you, you had a false breakout to the downside you kind of popped up here you really couldn't get through the upside so I think that there's probably a lot of Fed and Treasury action trying to keep it around this level not let it get too hot or too cold but uh, we shall see. What is uh, gold doing right now? Uh, gold's down about seven bucks. Really was kind of kind of quiet for the whole day out here after the open. I didn't see a lot of action. Um, yeah, I mean you could see one oh uh, one sixty three back in the GLD. Uh, you have a don't have a lot of volume today. Doesn't mean you couldn't get back down just a little further. I'm not a big fan of being short gold here, but uh, I think it's, I think um, overall, we're probably in what Elliott Waves would call the seventh wave of gold. And that first wave started back in 2000. We're probably going through the seventh wave now. And generally, it's very tough to tell because no one ever knows anything with Elliott Wave until you look at the rear mirror. But generally, the last move out of a big move, uh, and it lasts a, a fairly long time, is this last, what they call the seventh wave move, which is just painfully slow, but up. I mean, it just kind of... You know, you may have a little pullback like you have here, but it just slightly goes higher and higher and higher. And it never really has a lot of uh, breakouts, doesn't do a lot of stuff. It just kind of just goes higher and higher and higher. And then at the end, it gives it all up and it's 1987 all over again. And you wait 13 years for the next bull market to come in gold. So, you know, I'm, I'm watching gold closely to see if it, has the characteristics of that kind of seventh wave uh, in a, a very long-term pattern out here. So, one or the other, but just the way it's acted so far, the pullbacks, the gaps down, eh, we all think a lot about them, but if you look back in five years from this, you, it won't even be a blip. So we'll have to see, but that seventh wave kind of action is just devastating to people who try to trade in and out of these things. And maybe that's why you end up getting that kind of action uh, at the very end of a big, long, uh, multi-decade move and many things and commodities, gold, other stuff like that. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. Of course, you can always 
put a message in the den. Okay. Uh, yep, Zach. Oh, I think I got that earlier today. Uh, uh, that. Okay, take a look at SNOW. Uh, did uh, was fairly weak uh, pre-market the snowflake SNO. Uh, I just came. I mean, no real big signal out of this. If I saw this chart without knowing that they had news, would anything change? No, it just came down to support and it's holding it. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we had a question in the den about uh, total market uh volume and dollars more a question about the dollars i have it in my newsletter every day and it's uh eh, i'm gonna say it's light uh, about 421 billion dollars uh for yesterday 422 uh, uh kind of a big day 750 billion maybe 800 billion i think the highest ever was just under uh, I think 950 billion, just under a trillion, um, and the lowest I think was a half day, at about uh, 300 billion dollars. So there is uh, a wide range. Uh, for the last nine months before Fourth of July, where volume uh, and dollar amounts have really kind of started to fall, we had probably an average of somewhere around. 
650, 700 uh, billion uh, dollars traded daily. And as you can see yesterday, one of the weaker days we've had in a very long time. The last uh, big weekday was the uh, Fed announcement. I think that was what it was on the 25th uh, back here. And that was under 400,000. But I think that was because nine, half, nine tenths of the day, no one traded much of anything. Uh, but uh, no, we're not a lot of juice going on in this market. Uh, whether you want to look at it in total dollars or volume, we uh, did tip underneath 10 billion shares yesterday, about uh, what, 9.6 billion shares on the total volume of, the, of all of the stocks traded. Uh, I don't think that includes uh, over the counter. But over the counter is probably uh -huh, less than one hundredth of all the volume traded on these stocks. Uh, probably the biggest thing to me is just how much uh, the the big change has been in the uh, reach, uh, in the uh, street traders opposed to the retail traders. Retail traders have not bought this rally whatsoever. They're not chasing it. Um, I think that if the retail trader is doing much of anything, it's shorting these ridiculous uh, stocks like Bed Bath & Below. Uh, but uh, for the last three, four years, the average dark pool number is about 35%. We've been seeing it press 30, high 38s, 39s now for uh, about a week. And that makes me suspect that that's where that uh, Fed money is going. And that is that uh, the Fed has gone, okay, we got some cash for you guys. Here you go. Let's get it round up. Now, we may have seen that a little bit last month, too. But like I said, the average over the last year, probably about 35%. 30%, 36% uh, would be a big day. Now that we're getting 3 or 4% more each day in the dark pool numbers, it tells you how active they are compared to the rest and how active they are on very quiet markets where you don't have a great deal of total market dollars either. Uh, what I like to do is look at the total, uh, the total dollar amount and see how it's trending. Um, and... Uh, you know, you can look in that and go, okay, the volume was fairly good, but the total dollar market wasn't, didn't have a lot of uh, dollars in there, but you had lots of volume. And that's probably a good indication that the small caps are very active or maybe the mid caps opposed to the giant stocks out there. So if you get decent volume, but you don't get a lot of total market dollars, good indication that uh, you're probably fairly close to, to a top worry bottom because the people that uh, are trading the uh, least expensive penny and dollar stocks uh, aren't there or they are there one way or the other yeah uh, uh, yeah they added 5 billion last week 4.6 billion actually Okay. Okay, got a couple more. Uh, a little bit of that what's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes kind of thing. See if they can get a market going, but uh, hard to tell. Anyway, this is in my newsletter every day, but uh, that's how I use it. I want to look and see exactly where the volume and where the energy is going. Uh, generally, you know, for a single day, is it that big a deal? No. There are bigger things out there. Uh, two, 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 okay. Let's go back up here and look at some of these things. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. I added a position, and I always have to, because the newsletter is going to probably, before someone grabs it and looks at it, probably going to take at least 15, if not 30 minutes. So I have to kind of put a new position out when I think the market's going to move the way uh, I want to. And I think the tam timing is fairly good for that, that new positions in the daily newsletter. Uh, question about uh, Microsoft. So we'll go and look at that. MSFT. MSFT. 
And let's see. Okay. So we're back up to this gap down for Microsoft. That happened on April 11th. Did so on 35, what's called 35 million shares. Uh, last three days, you've had 22 million, 18 million. Today, you got about 9, 10 million shares. So I don't know if it really rolls over here hard, but uh, it certainly doesn't have a lot of juice. They Could they hold it up a little while in the uh, options expiration? They could. This doesn't seem like there's much there there, and certainly they're not running a lot of short positions out of the market on these big guys. It tends to be those meme stocks. Okay, we look at that. Uh, question to look at the IBB real quick. Okay, you're getting back into this high. Yesterday, you got into it with 50, uh, you got uh, one and a half million shares. Uh, okay, and that was in a 2.7 million share high. Eh, I mean, just when you look at it, I mean, you had the one thing, which was a lighter volume, oops, lighter volume test of the low. You did so with significantly lighter volume on June 16th. What you never really did was have any kind of real juice in it on the way up. So if you look at this kind of giant W formation, you came down with a whole lot of energy. You had uh, an okay bounce. You came down on even more energy and some gap downs. You finally came here in the IBB at about uh, 4.7 million shares to uh, 3 million. I tried to buy it right here. It just never really acted real well on the first couple of days, so I bailed on it. Probably should have held it a little longer. Uh, but I like that light volume test. I didn't like the energy on the way down, and that's what kind of spooked me. So we're kind of back on the way back up, but you don't have a lot of juice. And if you just look at this on the long term, the April 5th high down to the May 12th low compared to the June 16th low uh, to uh, yesterday's high, uh, pretty much looking at a market where the energy in the IBB was off about 20, well, we'll call it 22%, something like that. So not all that exciting. We look at full return. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm on. Well, I was busy sitting here reading something. So what can you say about that? Anyway, we were looking at the IBB when I was on there. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we already did the GLD and the TLT. Uh, we did uh, Home Depot and Walmart. Uh, we did talk about that. Okay, let's go back here to the emails and start taking a look. And, and we're down a little bit. I don't think that it's that big a deal right now, but certainly you're kind of down there. Uh, S&P up two points at the moment, and eh, three points at the moment. NASDAQ off 50. Crude oil down uh, 291. Gold off uh, $6.40. Silver off 13 cents as we get back to the market already in progress. As we uh, went through a lot of the earnings uh, yesterday, we're not going to rehash those. A uh, question uh, about how high can UNG go? And uh, I remember shorting the highs, and I want to say it was 2006. And I think uh, the, by whatever it is, a uh, billion cubic feet per whatever it was 16 I want to say 1675 1680 and I shorted it and made about two or three bucks on it which was a lot of money at the time and uh, remember that that was the single biggest trade by any single trader of all time but uh, you'd have to look at natural gas at 16. In 1675-ish, if I remember right, that was the high. So you have the ability, at least in the past, to get there. And that was uh, a scant 15 years ago, 16, 17 years ago. So that was it. Uh, doo -doo -doo, okay. Eh. Okay. Uh, okay. Go back out here. Look at uh, anyway. You, uh, you don't have a lot of volume here. Maybe you pull back one more time, but uh, I can't see any reason to say that uh, you're not going to see natural gas just continue going higher. So it's one of those things. Like I said, you probably just want to. If you've got a good position, you probably just want to sit on your hands unless the story changes, and I don't see that changing a great deal uh, for what's going on. Okay, to, to look at the XME. Sally? Yeah, you're a little lighter out here in metals and minings. It's not horrible. Uh, you got a six and a half on the way down and a five on the way up. 
uh, you had a little under 4 million shares two days ago. Today, 2.6. I just think the whole market's kind of weak. Uh, I look probably for some kind of pullback uh, to a trend line back, which would be about, yeah. If it happened all tomorrow, it would be about 40. If it happens in about three days, it would be about 51. So that's not big stuff. Okay. Uh, could we see some continued improvement in bank stocks? I think, you know, as long as they keep raising rates, yeah. I don't see a whole lot going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and X take a look at the XLF. Um, the big problem you have is the entire market right here is weak. Uh, as I said, one of the things I love the best uh, I broke that today it was 23 million. So about being congruent a lot, that's kind of the equivalent of see you guys, one's calling uh, another one a weekly, uh, and he's doing it with a smile on his face, so you know he's probably, it, it's his friend. So he's just busting his chops. Well, that's congruent. Now you get the same thing, someone yelling and screaming at somebody, and it looks like they're going to stop the heart. Well, that's congruent. That's a signal that, you know, bad, they're smiling, they're saying horrible things. It's not to bust chops, it's because they uh, really have a dislike. So whether someone says something nice to them with a smile, uh, or uh, says something mean to them with a smile, or actually is mean and says something mean, uh, you, you can get the congruency of the actions uh, from two people interacting. And I kind of look at it the same way here. You should see if everybody's all hot and bothered to buy stocks, which we kind of showed at least uh, that for the most part it was uh, the people on Wall Street because of the high percentage of dark pool numbers out here. You should see strong energy on the way up, and you should see at previous highs a uh, fairly decent volume. And you really don't have that. You've got what, half the volume right now in the XLF and the previous high. Uh, the energy was uh, on my power law vector indicator number was 18 on the way down. It's 13 on the way up. Uh, so you're probably going to get a pullback. Now, does on a week mean that you can't go higher? No. It's just that the percentages are fairly good that you'd, you would. Uh, on this one, I think you could probably look at a, re, uh, a pullback to 34 box and maybe volume comes in in September but my guess would be that you either pull back and fail or that you pull back and consolidate uh, this and maybe get some more volume come September yeah I know uh, internet uh, they replaced the um, one of the uh, um, amplifiers on the pole down the street this morning and you always cringe when everything's working well that they'll do that we uh eh, what can you say eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight and yeah, now i'm back now yeah i turned off my tv and everything else but uh you just never know on these things you know the one thing i didn't do is reboot all my routers and stuff um i just let it die because it was off from about nine thirty to uh, 10 15 this morning i probably should have rebooted everything including the computer so i'll probably do that uh after we finish the show here but hey eh, you live and learn okay uh, we got a little bit of time left to go uh and uh you can still email me and get uh, the last question or putting it in the den and we'll be uh, glad to do that but uh we'll just uh, really check in in the last segment for the volume and see if it picks up much of at all but uh you know we had some volume during this last hour it was just that whole sell-off uh, that really moved uh, lower and quicker we're doing about seven and a half billion shares now This 
Mesa Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And question out here uh, from Ben about uh, the Fed putting $4.6 billion into the market. Uh, Santoli. Santelli? Eh, I can't keep those two straight from CNBC. He had it on one of the feeds that he was talking uh, to everybody. Uh, and uh, the balance, it didn't show up anywhere else except in the amount of equities they owned. So it's hard to know exactly how they... Uh, ended up with $4.6 billion more on the balance sheet. It wasn't marking it to market. Uh, it was just a $4.6 billion uh, dollar bounce from one week to the next for what they uh, actually owned in equities, which they still own a lot. So that tells you that something happened in there. Uh, I think they had a short discussion because I went and tried to look it up later that day with uh, uh, Leisman. Leesman, Leisman, uh, and uh, they kind of cut it off. I dug around a little bit more and found a couple of articles on it. But uh, it is uh, the total amount uh, of money they have, not the uh, current notional mark-to-market value, but the total dollars that they had. But uh, that came in on Friday morning, but kind of swamped, over-swamped by the rest of them, the uh, 
news coming out. So they didn't spend a lot of time, maybe 30 seconds or a minute on it. But that's where I got the $4.6 billion because uh, he was scratching his head and talking to Leesman and Leesman didn't want to bring it up or talk about it at all and moved on fairly quickly. But I did check it down and found out that there was another article from Bloomberg and a few other places. Now, $4.6 billion in the scheme of things, probably not big. But if they continue to do that, it could be. Uh, I suspect they did it to cover up uh, that week because they knew that bad China news was coming. They wanted to prep the markets to make sure that we were fairly bullish when it happened. So the question is, do they do it ever again? So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.